Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. We continue talking about a structure of atom, electronic structure of atom, how basically electrons are positioned around a nucleus. This lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture and everything else from the website because it's a course, which means there is a menu, there is a certain sequence order of lectures um, uh, because if you just found it on YouTube, let's say, uh, it's just one singular uh, lecture and I might refer it to something else and you don't know where it is. From the website you have all the lectures at your disposal. Um, now the website is uh, totally free, there are no advertisements, no strings attached, you don't even have to sign in if you just learning by yourself. Um, there is a prerequisite course on the same website called Math for Teens. Math is absolutely necessary to study physics and uh, at least something like uh, calculus and uh, vector analysis are definitely uh, uh, the, the, the part subjects of uh, mathematics which are ne needed for physics. Uh, what else? Now, the website has not only lectures, but also the textual description of every lecture. So you have a video and you have a text, like a textbook, basically. So you can always, after the video, you can um, read the, the textual part of it, just to re-emphasize certain things and make it a little bit, maybe, better understanding. Okay, so today we will talk about um, energy of um, electrons. Now, we did go through Bohr's model of um, how electrons actually are um, moving around a nucleus, that there are certain stationary uh, orbits where moving on these orbits, moving along these orbits, electrons do not emit any energy, and that's what makes these orbits stable. So we were talking about, instead of the word orbit, we were talking about um, the concept called shell, which b basically means the same thing, it, it just reflects the three-dimensional world we are in. So electrons are somewhere within certain shells around, um, around the nucleus. Now, we were also talking that um, it, it's not just shells, every shell has certain subshells, and uh, it was a pretty good, like mathematically even very nicely looking theory about subshells. So subshells have numbers, uh, numbered let's say one, two, three, four, five. Uh, they have been assigned letters, I think it's S, uh, P, um, I don't remember, um, something like F maybe, no, D, first G I believe, and then F. And then G, and then by alphabetically. There are some historical reasons for these letters. So subshells um, are called with the letters. And uh, every subshell has certain maximum number of electrons it can hold. So this one is 2, then 6, then 10, then 14, then 18. Every time we are increasing by 4. So this is number of electrons per shell. Now, per subshell, I'm sorry. So these are subshells. Now, the shells has certain number of subshells. The shell number one um, has one subshell. Shell number two has two. Shell number three has three subshells. So this one has S, this one has S and P. This one has S, P, and uh, I guess D, <coughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 
I think that's what it is. Right. Etc. So these are shells. These are number of subshells. And as you see, number of subshells is equal to no shell number. And then these are subshells which are included. Which means that the first shell has only two electrons. The second shell has 2 plus 6 equals 8. And this one has 2 plus 6 plus 8 equals 18. So these are structures of the first layers around the nucleus. Now, let me just exemplify it with um, this configuration uh, for a few elements which we do know about. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can scratch this. Okay. Let's start from hydrogen. Now, hydrogen has atomic number one, which means it has only one proton and one electron. Now, obviously, this one electron should be on the first subshell of the first shell, because it's only one electron. There is nothing else, right? So, what I can say is that the electronic structure of the uh, hydrogen is first shell has only one single subshell, and there is only one single electron in it. So this is a shell number, this is subshell letter, well, num letter and number basically correspond to each other, but it's traditionally uh, the letters. And the superscript with the shell tells how many electrons it holds. Okay, let's go further. Helium. Helium has atomic um, number 2, which means it has 2 protons and 2 electrons. Okay, now, shell number 1 has subshell, which can hold up to 2 electrons. And that's the only thing which we need. We have 2 electrons. So they go to the first uh, subshell of the first shell, and that's it. Next one, lithium. Lithium has atomic number three, which means it has three protons and correspondingly three electrons to make the atom neutral. Now, how they can actually be uh, positioned? Well, let's just think about it. We have the first shell. Now, the first shell has only one subshell, and this is subshell S it can hold up to two electrons. Okay, so we have two electrons here. But we have three electrons, so where does it go? The first shell doesn't have any more subshells. So we need to go to the second shell, to its first subshell, and put electron there. Well, it's not we actually putting the electron there. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> Who puts there, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so that's basically how the lithium atom is created. Okay, let's just skip a couple and let's go to carbon. Carbon has atomic uh, number six. So we have six protons in the nucleus, we have six electrons in orbits. So let's just position these six electrons into shells and subshells. Again, let's start sequentially. We have the first shell, it can, has, it can have only one subshell, and this subshell has two electrons. Okay. Two goes, four to go. Now, now we have the second subshell. Now, the second subshell has the first subshell of it. It can hold also two, right? No more than two. So we need to go to the second subshell of the second shell. So it's two 
This is the P is the letter of the second subject. And it can hold up to six electrons. Now, we need only two left, right? Because we need six, so it's two, two, and two, six. So this is how the electrons of carbon are positioned. There are two shells. The first shell has only one subshell, and it has two electrons. The second shell has two subshells. The first one has two, and whatever is left of electrons, two of them, goes to the second subshell. Now, this is not the limit. The limit is six for the second subshell, right? Okay. Now, let's skip a few more. Let's go to silicon. Silicon has atomic number 14. So we have, to four, we have 14 electrons to spread around. Well, let's just continue this thing. I think it's an interesting kind of exercise. So, the first subshell can, has, can have only one subshell and two goes there. Great. Let's talk about the second subshell. Two goes to the first subshell of the second shell. Now, the second subshell has the second, second shell has second subshell, which can hold up to six. Now, we need 14, so these six will be definitely taken. Now, the second shell has only two subshells, so we cannot go into the second shell anymore. So we need to start the third shell. Okay, the third shell has the first subshell, which can hold two of them. Now, what do I have right now? I have 10, 12. We need 14. So we need two more electrons. Well, we have the second shell of the second shell of the third shell and the remaining two electrons will go there. That's silicon. Okay, now. It's actually getting much more interesting as we go down the table of elements. The next one I would go with argon. Argon is the, uh, the noble gas, actually. Now, it has 18, number 18. Now, in many cases, or what people do, instead of repeating all this, I, I will repeat all this, but they're kind of abbreviating. So instead of this, for example, uh, they can call something like um, this part, for instance. This part is equal to 3 litium or something like that. I mean, they do abbreviate. So they take the part, and instead of putting all these shells and subshell, they put something which they already have uh, written about, and then attach a couple of more. But I will, I will go all the way through. All right, so argon has 18. Well, let's think about this guy, 14. We still have some capacity here, right? Now, the P has, uh, subshell P has 6 maximum, right? So it's, we, need, we can put four more, and four more will be exactly this. So what I will do is, I will basically repeat the whole thing. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6, that's the maximum. And that would be 18. 2 into 4, uh, 10, 12, 18. So we have 18. And as you see, we have completely exhausted the um, second uh, subshell of the third shell with argon. I specifically decided to finish up filling completely this second subshell because this, the, nec the next example will be extremely important. And here is why. Let's take exactly the next element after argon, which is potassium. Potassium is K, kalium, and number 
uh, atomic number is 18, uh, 19, 19, one greater than this. Now, let's just think about it. If you have one more electron, now obviously the last um, uh, subshell, the second subshell of the third shell, is completely exhausted. So, what do we do? I mean, it's natural, and let me tell you, from the mathematician's standpoint, it's absolutely natural. So whenever we have exhausted the third, uh, the, the second subshell of the third sub, uh, of the third shell, I know that the third shell has three subshells, right? The third has S, P, and D. So my natural instinct would tell me that I have to just put one more electron into the next subshell, which is subshell D. So I would put that this is equal to argon. 18 plus 3d1. So repeat all this. These are first uh, two subshell completely, and the third subshell with two uh, uh, and the third shell with two subshells. And they know there is a third subshell in the third shell. So I can put this electron. But this is not exactly what happens. Well, people did experiments. What happened was, instead, they have the same thing as argon, so which means all this sequence, and the next one was um, 4s1. So instead of using the third subshell of the third shell, it goes to the fourth uh, shell first subshell. Obvious question why. And here we go to the subject of this le lecture, which is energy levels. Here is the problem. Now, you remember that, again, in previous lectures, we were talking about energy of the electron as it rotates around the nucleus. It's a Coulomb constant, square of its um, charge divided by two uh, radiuses, radius of the orbit. Now, we did actually derive this formula. This is the full energy potential and uh, kinetic. Kinetic energy is, ne uh, is, is positive, and potential, negative, uh, potential ne energy is negative, uh, and the total result is negative. Now, why is it negative? Well, because it's not we who are supposed to spend some work putting electron on the orbit. Because electron is uh, attracting to a uh, nucleus, it's whenever we want to take it away, we have to spend energy. That's why potential energy is negative. And by absolute value, potential energy is greater than kinetic, and that's why the whole result is negative. However, it is negative. However, as r increasing, the absolute value of the total energy is decreasing. So, basically, it's negative, but it goes to zero. As r increasing. As r increasing, the potential, the total energy is increasing, but still remains at zero. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that as we are approaching um, greater and greater radiuses, the difference between energy levels becomes less and less and less. Now, we know that every orbit has some kind of an energy, right? So, we need something like a few different subshells, which means few different orbits on each shell level, right? So, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know, it looks like the shells overlap from the energy standpoint. So, if I will go like a model of the atom. So this is one shell, and this is another shell. Now this shell has subshells.
and this shell has subshells. And whenever you increase the subshell number, the the uh, like let's say the third subshell of this shell is energetically, if if the distance is the energy level, energetically it it would be greater than the the first shell of the next the, the first subshell of the next shell so that's why shells are this is one shell and this is another shell so these are subshell my fingers are subshell so they are into, uh, uh, overlapping and that's why the energy level of lower shell lower shell but higher subshell may be greater than the lower subshell of higher shell. So that's, 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 that's basically how it is. And now we get a principle how electrons are distributed among shells and subshells. And it's uh, attributed to a few names. Uh, I don't remember them obviously. Aufbau principle and then there are Medlang and uh, uh, Klitschkovsky. Um, people who were kind of explaining the whole mechanism of this that electrons are not going like sequentially into shells and subshells within the shells no they are going sequentially according to the energy level now in the beginning let me go back to my graph in the beginning when the radiuses are small which means the shells are in the fir first shells, like first shell, the second shell, the difference between energy level is significant between the shells, and that's why there is a room for subshells here and subshells here, and they are not overlapping. But the farther we go from the nucleus, so the shells with numbers like three, four, five, etc., they are so close to each other that the subshells of this one interfere with subshells, uh, overlap with, with subshells of the next shell. And that's why, since the principle says that electrons take um, the orbit in the order of increasing energy, not in the order of increasing like shell number or subshell number, increasing energy, that's why we have this situation then, instead of going into the third subshell of the third shell, electron goes to the fourth shell, but the first subshell. So again, third shell, third subshell has greater energy level than the fourth shell, first subshell. That's how it is. And as a result of this, all shells and subshells are ordered, basically, in the um, level of energy they carry. And this order I put in writing in the textual part of um, this lecture. It's basically like 1s is less than um, 2s is less than 2p is less than um, 3s less than 3p and here instead of instead of less than 3d which is the third subshell of the third shell uh, it's actually 4s and then 3d because as i was saying the first subshell of the fourth shell has less energy than the third shell subshell of the third shell okay that's what it is um, now why this is this way? There are really very neat theories about this, and they're completely beyond the level of this particular course. But there are certain very, very logical explanations, because it's related to how exactly these shells are organized and subshells, etc. So basically, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, I, I think the most important thing for you to understand this kind of notation. That's number one. And the second is that shells overlap with their shells as far as energy is concerned. 
But when, when you see something like this, you should not be surprised. This is very easy to decipher. The shell number, the subshell letter, which basically corresponds to number, and the number of electrons this particular um, uh, subshell carries. This is an electronic structure of every element. If you go to some textbook, whatever, it, and, and you were basically studying this uh, electronic structure, you, you will always see notation like this. So I would like you to understand it. There is nothing uh, outlandish or very, very um, uh, difficult to understand about this. It's very, very easy. Shells, subshells, and number of electrons per uh, subshell. With this particular uh, twist that electrons are filling orbits, not in the order of shell, subshell, but in the order of energy levels, from lower to the higher, which happen to correspond in the beginning the shell subshell number, but as we go further with greater um, atomic numbers, with greater number of electrons, then this particular <coughs> order might be distorted in some way or another. And potassium is perfect example of it. Okay, that's it. I do suggest you to read the notes for these lectures, and this is it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.